So, uh, so let's continue with our discussion, which is about trying to uh, see what kind of results you can expect for a function which is analytic at infinity. So I told you last class, I mean in the last lecture, that you know, uh, if a function is analytic at infinity, then you cannot expect Cauchy's theorem to work. Okay, and uh, the easiest uh, demonstration of that is taking the function one by z, okay, which is analytic at infinity, but uh, if you integrate it. Uh, over a simple closed curve uh, in a neighborhood of infinity, you are going to get <coughs> there is a possibility that you do not get 0. Okay. So, Cauchy's theorem will fail, could fail, but uh, uh, what works is uh, uh, and, and before that we saw that you know we, you, if you have a function which is analytic at a point in the plane, then you know that all its derivatives are also the all the derivatives exist, derivatives of all orders exist and they are also analytic at that point. That anyway is uh, true for a function which is analytic at infinity. If a function is analytic at infinity, then all its derivatives are also analytic at infinity, and we, in fact, those derivatives will at the derivatives at infinity will be zero. And uh, the crucial point to note that is that you don't define actually the derivative at infinity. It doesn't make sense, but you there you you deduce that the derivatives are all zero at infinity. Okay. Um, and then uh, the, the last thing that I said was about Morera's theorem okay, and that Morera's theorem actually works okay, uh, even for a function uh, which is analytic uh, in a domain in the external complex domain. Okay. So, so let me, let me, uh, let me explain that. Um, so, suppose uh, f of z uh, is uh, analytic uh, in a domain in C union infinity which is the extended complex plane okay um, and uh, integral over gamma f of z dz is 0 uh, for every uh, simple closed curve uh, in that domain. So, uh, uh, then uh, 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 well um, I should not say analytic um, which is uh, it should be it should be the conclusion suppose f of z is continuous. So, I should so let me uh, remind you that the whole point about Morera's theorem is that you are trying to get a converse of Cauchy's theorem okay, and uh, the Cauchy's theorem is the is that the integral over a closed curve is zero, okay? Integral over a simple closed curve is zero, and you want to say that if uh, uh, and that's true for an analytic function. For a function that's analytic on and inside a simple closed curve, then the integral over that curve is zero. But uh, you want a converse, that is, you want to say that if a function, uh, if if the integral over every curve is zero, every simple closed curve is zero then the function is analytic then you will have to add this condition of continuity because if you do not add the condition of continuity then you can uh, get into trouble. Okay. So, uh, that is also the same statement uh, in the case of a domain including the point at infinity. Uh, suppose f is continuous uh, in a domain including the point at infinity and uh, 
you know uh, the integral over any simple closed curve is 0 then f is analytic in that domain that is the statement. But the point is I want to uh, stress that when you say integral over a closed curve and you are saying uh, uh, for a curve in uh, the domain which contains a point at infinity you must you, you must understand that this is not a curve uh, that will pass through infinity okay. So uh, when, when I say uh, when you say a curve in a domain okay it could in principle pass through any point of the domain but when I say a curve uh, in a domain in the external complex plane the domain in the external complex plane could contain the point at infinity and in the case uh, when it contains the point in, at infinity uh, when I say a curve in the domain it necessarily means that I am not thinking of a curve passing through the point at infinity it does not make sense okay. So uh, uh, whenever you whenever we talk about simple closed curve whether it is in the complex plane or in the external complex plane a simple closed curve is always a simple closed curve in the complex plane okay even if uh, even if you are looking at domain in the external complex plane which includes a point at infinity a simple closed curve always means just a simple closed curve in the usual complex plane the point at infinity is not involved okay. So, uh, so here is a conclusion uh, the conclusion is uh, that uh, if f of z is continuous in a domain in the external complex plane and integral over every simple closed curve in that domain of f is 0 then f is analytic uh, in, the, in, the, in that domain. So this is Morera's theorem and the, and the fact is that and the, and the proof is pretty easy as I was uh, uh, saying by words last time the proof is uh, 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 the proof uses the usual Morera theorem and then you, you and it uses the definition of uh, being analytic at infinity okay. So, uh, uh, so, so let me write this uh, f is analytic uh, on uh, the domain so you know uh, so let me call this domain as uh, let me call this domain as D. So f is analytic on d minus the point at infinity okay throw away the point at infinity f is analytic on that by the usual Morera's theorem of course by usual Morera's theorem I mean the version of Morera's theorem that you study on the complex plane okay it is analytic because it is continuous uh, if you even if you throw if it is if, if a function is continuous on a domain then it is also continuous on every subset of that domain. So if a function is continuous on the domain D then if you remove something from D it continues to be continuous okay uh, the restriction of a continuous function is always a continuous function. So the function continues to be analytic in the domain uh, with the point at infinity thrown out okay and that is a domain in the usual complex plane and uh, integral over every closed curve is 0 uh, that is a that is one of the conditions of Morera's theorem. So the usual Morera's theorem uh, by that I mean the uh, version of Morera's theorem for the usual complex plane that works okay and f becomes analytic and because f becomes analytic on d minus infinity what it tells you is that infinity is a singular point okay it tells you that infinity is a singular point because uh, d minus infinity is a neighborhood of infinity okay and of course you know uh, in all this I am assuming that infinity is in the domain if infinity is not in the domain there is nothing to prove okay because it is the usual Morera's theorem which we assume okay. So, uh, I am assuming that infinity is in the domain and if infinity is in the domain then infinity is an interior point and if I say that outside infinity the function is analytic that means the analytic function is analytic in a neighborhood of infinity the domain itself uh, any domain which contains infinity is a neighborhood of infinity and f is analytic in that neighborhood of infinity uh, in the deleted neighborhood of infinity and but there is also this, this extra <coughs> assumption that f is continuous at infinity because f is continuous on the domain it is continuous at every point in the domain so infinity is also there in that in the domain so f is continuous at infinity but then you know we cheated by saying that continuity at infinity is same as analyticity at infinity and and this is kind of inspiration we drew from the removable singularity theorem in the usual complex plane. So what it what you get is that uh, first you get that if you throw the point at infinity out uh, the function is analytic okay and that will tell you that the point at infinity is a singular point is an isolated singular point and then continuity at infinity will tell you that it is also analytic at infinity and therefore it is analytic at all points in the domain and your uh, new version of Morera's theorem works okay. So let me write this down um, uh, 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 by usual uh, uh, 
uh, uh, by usual Morera's theorem I mean that is uh, for domains in the complex plane because d minus infinity is a domain in the complex plane. Um, uh, thus uh, infinity is uh, an isolated singular point of f uh, but uh, f is continuous f is continuous at infinity so it is analytic at infinity so so that is the end of the proof and you see the the what you see that is that you know it is it is just being one is just being very clever uh, I when I say in infinity is an isolated singular point and then when I say f is continuous at infinity you know that means I am actually saying that uh, f is a, infinity is a removable singularity and uh, infinity being a removable singularity was a clever way in which we defined f to be analytic at infinity okay and the inspiration was taken from the removable singularity theorem Riemann's removable singularity theorem because you know the straight the, the, the straightforward way of trying to say that the function is analytic at a point if it is differentiable at that point and also in a neighborhood of the point will not work for the point at infinity because you cannot define the derivative at infinity at the point for the point at infinity that is the problem okay fine. So Morera's theorem works now um, uh, now what I want to uh, uh, tell you about is uh, is about a problem that I want you to try uh, uh, so, so here is a problem uh, for you to try. Uh, uh, let uh, D be a domain uh, uh, in uh, uh, in C or C union infinity and let F F of Z be analytic in D uh, uh, let F of Z be continuous let f of z be continuous in D. Uh, suppose there exists an n greater than 1 such that of course when I say n greater than 1 it is an integer n greater than 1 n is not a real number okay greater than 1 yeah. suppose there is an integer n greater than 1 such that f of z to the power of n is analytic in D show that show that F itself is analytic in D okay. So this is a uh, this is a problem which I want you to try okay. So you are so the idea is very simple you have a domain uh, of course non empty connected open set. Uh, the domain you can take the domain either in the complex plane or you can include the point at infinity if you want. Uh, first maybe you first try it for a domain in the complex plane and then you will see that the same arguments will work uh, for a, for the point at infinity. Um, suppose f is continuous uh, in D and uh, there exists uh, uh, an integer power of f greater than 1 uh, which is analytic then f itself has to be analytic okay. So, um, so you can try this. Um, uh, now what I am going to do is um, well uh, we, have, we have now more or less seen uh, something about uh, the infinity being a point of analyticity or which is the same as saying uh, infinity is a removable singularity the next kind of singularity is that of a pole okay. So let us go to the study of uh, infinity as a pole okay. So, um, so, so let me go to the to the next page um, uh, infinity as a pole so here is so here is the situation you have a function f which is uh, which has infinity as an isolated singular point okay that means it is defined in a deleted neighborhood of infinity which you should think of as a, the exterior of a sufficiently large uh, circle on the complex plane okay and uh, uh, the question is that uh, when is infinity a pole okay so how do you define this so the uh, of course there are there are the the way we do it is that we uh, we call the independent variable as w uh, we write the function as f of w and then we say the behavior of f of w at 
w equal to infinity is the same as the behavior of f of 1 by z at z equal to 0 because you are plugging in w equal to 1 by z okay. So this is a philosophy which we have justified earlier because w equal to 1 by z is a is a homeomorphism uh, of the extended complex plane onto the extended complex plane which is an analytic isomorphism of the punctured plane onto itself okay. So um, and under an analytic isomorphism uh, uh, the type of singularity must coincide okay. So, um, so let me so let me do that. Uh, uh, so, how do you define uh, uh, f f has f of w has a pole at, at w equal to infinity? Uh, this is the the definition. This is I'll put d f definition. If and only if g of z, which is uh, f of one by z, has a pole. at z equal to 0. So uh, this is the uh, this is the way we do it okay but what are these conditions. So you know um, so what is a condition that a function g uh, has a pole at, at a finite point of the complex plane there are, there are 3 equivalent conditions you know one is based on the limit of the function as you approach that point uh, uh, the limit should tend to infinity that is that is one way of looking certifying that something is a pole. The other way is to look at the Laurent series uh, at that point and then uh, see that there are only finitely many terms in the singular part and the third one is to uh, say that you know uh, think of your a pole of a certain a pole has to have a certain order okay a pole uh, has to have a certain positive integer order and that positive integer is actually the power uh, uh, of the variable. Uh, minus the center uh, which you have to multiply with the function to neutralize the pole because uh, it is like uh, if, a if a function has uh, uh, a pole of order n at uh, z at z naught okay then uh, multiplying the function by z minus z naught power n should neutralize the pole okay. So you neutralize the pole by multiplying by the uh, by, by killing the 0 of the denominator okay. So, uh, uh, so I will write down all those 3 conditions. So the first thing is uh, there exists an n greater than 0 such that uh, uh, you know z power n g of z uh, limit z tends to 0 uh, is equal to is, is non 0 okay uh, is non 0 and of course uh, 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 in fact it is a non 0 complex number it is not when I say it is non 0 it cannot it cannot be uh, I, I do not I do not want this to be infinity. So this should belong to uh, the punctured complex plane okay. So this is one definition of uh, a pole of order n uh, g this is one definition of g having a pole of order n at uh, at z equal to 0 okay. Had it been a pole of order n at z equal to z naught you know uh, you will have to modify it to limit z tends to z naught z minus z naught to the power of n times g of z is a non-zero complex number okay. So this is one definition okay. Then uh, the 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 other definition is of course uh, it is it is a definition that has got nothing to do with the order of the pole it is the fact that the function approaches uh, infinity as you approach the pole which means that the function in modulus approaches infinity as you approach the pole. So uh, this that second condition is limit z tends to 0 g of z is infinity okay and mind you you should think about this in terms of uh, what uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, a limit being infinite that we have defined earlier okay. So uh, the way this should be make, made sense of is that as z comes closer and closer to 0 that is if z is restricted to a small deleted neighborhood of 0 then the values of g a z will lie in a small deleted neighborhood of the point at infinity which is supposed to be the exterior of a sufficiently large circle in the complex plane okay. So that is what that is how you should think of this and well the, the, the third condition is uh, that the, the principal part or the singular part of the Laurent series of G at the origin has only finitely many terms okay uh, and the highest negative power is of course going to be uh, you know the subscript is going to be uh, 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 this n which is the order of the pole okay uh, or rather minus of that subscript okay. Um, so um, um, or rather let me say this 
the you take minus of the highest negative power of set that should be n ok. So, uh, uh, the Laurent series of uh, g of z at 0 has only uh, a finite uh, uh, singular or principal principal part and what you must remember is that uh, uh, this is the same as saying that it has only finitely many terms involving negative powers of z ok. Now uh, the fact is that each of these definitions have their analogues uh, for uh, f at infinity ok uh, having a pole at infinity and <coughs> well you know uh, I just want to point out uh, a few subtleties. So you know for example uh, the one in the middle goes through very easily uh, limit z tends to 0 g of z is infinity is the same as saying limit uh, limit w tends to infinity f of w equal to infinity this is this is direct because basically uh, z is 1 by w and z tends to 0 is equivalent to w going to infinity and the limit going to uh, 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 and I so I just make a change of variable from z to w by putting w equal to 1 by z or z equal to 1 by w ok. So the that these two are one and the same is obvious ok uh, and especially you know again you are using the fact that w uh, is equal to 1 by z which is z going to 1 by z is a homeomorphism ok that is there that is implicitly used here ok. Uh, uh, um, essentially because uh, basically under a continuous map uh, the image of a uh, convergent sequence is a convergent sequence ok. So, um, so this is very very clear so if you want to test of whether a function is uh, uh, having a pole at infinity uh, you just have to see whether it goes to infinity as you approach the point at infinity ok. So, uh, and and what does it mean in terms of uh, uh, the topology of the point at infinity it means that if mod z is sufficiently large then mod uh, I mean if mod w is sufficiently large then mod f w is also sufficiently large. You can make mod f w as large as you want provided you choose mod w as large as you want that is that is just a verbal restate statement of saying that uh, f tends to infinity as uh, w tends to infinity ok. So, the, the one in this and the center is pretty easy the one in the top needs a little bit of thought you see uh, you see if you want to neutralize uh, this uh, pole of order n of g at 0 uh, mind you a pole of order n should be thought of as a 0 of order n of the denominator or of the reciprocal of the function. So, uh, if you want to neutralize a pole you should multiply a power by a power of the variable ok or the power of variable minus the center at the point which is the pole ok. Uh, but to do it at infinity you, you can imagine you have to divide ok to if you want to neutralize a pole at infinity ok you will have to divide. So, that you can see by simply substituting z equal to 1 by w in this. So, this is equal to limit w tends to infinity uh, 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 f of w by w to the power of n is, uh, is, a, is a non zero complex norm. So this is uh, so so this is the point that you have to notice to neutralize a pole at a finite uh, point in the complex plane, uh, a finite point z naught in the complex plane. You have to multiply by a sufficiently high power of z minus z naught. Okay, uh, and uh, in fact, it is a, a particular power of z minus z naught. Okay, and that is the order of the pole. Okay, at z naught, but if you want to neutralize the pole at infinity you have to divide by the variable by the correct power of the variable ok. So, uh, as for example the simplest case is take the identity function f of w equal to w ok uh, that has a pole at infinity because f of w equal to w if I take limit w tends to infinity I am going to get infinity limit w tends to infinity of w is just infinity ok. So, infinity is a pole <coughs> and it is a pole of order 1 because I can neutralize it by dividing by w you take the function f of w equal to w divide by w I will get 1 now that is a constant function which even at infinity remains 1 ok. 
So, uh, you can see that <coughs> in this way you can see that if you take a polynomial of degree n, if you take a polynomial of degree n in W, a polynomial of positive degree in W that has a pole at infinity and the order of the pole will be simply the order of uh, the degree of the polynomial okay. So, if you have polynomial of degree n in W, uh, if you divide it by W power n and then take limit as W tends to infinity you will see that you will end up with uh, uh, you will end up with a uh, non-zero uh, complex number okay. So, polynomial of degree n has a pole of order n at infinity okay uh, that is something that you can see. And um, coming to this last condition on the left which is that the Laurent series of g at 0 has only a finite uh, singular or principal part uh, what will that translate to? It will translate to the fact that the uh, the singular part of the uh, uh, of the Laurent series of f at infinity okay uh, will have only finitely many terms okay. But mind you the singular part of uh, 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 of a function at infinity is supposed to be the part that consists of positive powers of the variable okay. See you must remember that the singular part and the analytic part they will interchange if you move from 0 to infinity okay. So, at 0 it is the positive powers of the variable that behave well and the negative powers of the variable do not behave well. At infinity it is the other way around. At infinity it is the negative powers of the variable that behave well and they form the analytic part along with the constant term okay and the positive powers of the variable misbehave and they form the singular part. So, saying that the, 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 the right way to say uh, the function has a pole at, inf at infinity is to say that if you take the uh, Laurent expansion at infinity then the there are only finitely many positive powers of the of, of the variable okay and that is equivalent to saying that the, the, the singular part at infinity or the principal part of it at infinity is a polynomial okay. So, let me write that down. Uh, uh, the 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 singular part part or principal part uh, consisting of positive powers of z of positive powers of w uh, of the Laurent series at infinity. is a polynomial of course of course you know uh, the constant term is not included the constant term is taken to be part of the anal it's part of the analytic part so the constant term which is the zeroth power of the variable okay uh, the question of the zeroth power of the variable and then uh, and 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 the other coefficient and uh, the other terms which involve the negative powers of the variable okay powers of 1 by w this form the analytic part at infinity okay and the positive powers of the variable okay they form the uh, singular part at infinity and that has to have only finitely many terms which means that, that it is it has to be a polynomial okay uh, a polynomial with constant term 0 okay and of course the degree of that polynomial will be the degree of the pole okay. So, uh, so now and, and uh, in because of all this what you can say is that therefore you know these three are uh, you know these three are equivalent so let me write let me put that here this is equivalent to this and this is equivalent to this and I I I will put therefore uh, the point is that somehow you may have to go to the behavior at 0 and mind you uh, even at uh, uh, that these three conditions for a pole in the finite complex plane that they are equivalent uh, if you have tried to write down a proof of the equivalence you will see that somewhere you might use uh, removable singularity is theorem okay. So, that is something that you should try to do okay uh, if you have not done it fine. So, um, so, so the so the moral of the story is you think of uh, a function having a pole at infinity uh, uh, essentially to be uh, a polynomial plus something which is analytic at infinity okay. So, the model for a function having a pole at infinity is a polynomial. So, polynomials are uh, functions which have a pole at infinity okay and the degree uh, and, and the order of the pole at infinity is just the degree of the polynomial okay and 
uh, therefore, uh, you must understand that you know uh, uh, and mind you these are entire functions, polynomials are entire functions. So, the moral of the story is that uh, uh, if you if you take an entire function okay, and if it has a pole at infinity you should expect it to be a only a polynomial okay. and uh, more generally uh, 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 this is not exactly correct you what you could get is that you could get a quotient of polynomials also with the numerator polynomial bigger than the denominator polynomial okay. that is also possible because that is also something that will uh, uh, as an improper rational fraction will work out to uh, something uh, that is a proper fraction plus uh, uh, a polynomial and the proper part uh, will be uh, analytic at infinity okay so um, so let me let me let me uh, let me say that more in in more detail mm. so um, so here is uh, so here is a remark um, uh, if um, f of w uh, is an uh, entire function uh, with uh, infinity as a pole then f is a polynomial in w and conversely ok. So, uh, the converse is something that we have, ju we, we have just seen you would if f is a polynomial then a polynomial is of course entire and a polynomial uh, is uh, does have a pole at infinity of course you know in all these things you have to assume that you are not working with a constant function because a constant function should always be excluded. So, uh, because uh, even constants are thought of as polynomials. So, let me just uh, put non constant entire function. So, let me write non constant here ok. Let me write non constant here uh, uh, mind you if you have an entire function which is uh, analytic at infinity it has to be constant ok. Uh, this is uh, uh, a non constant entire function will have a problem at infinity it will have a singularity at infinity and that inf that singularity cannot be removable ok that is just another avatar of Liouville's theorem ok. So, uh, so how do you prove this uh, proof is very very simple uh, uh, well uh, let me say it in words f f has a pole at infinity. So, if you write the uh, Laurent expansion at infinity uh, the singular part is a polynomial ok and then there will be an analytic part which consists of a constant and it will consist of negative powers of w ok. But then this is also supposed to be analytic at 0. So, you cannot really have any negative powers of 0 because they will uh, ne negative powers of the variable because they will they will they will simply the negative powers of the variable will simply uh, misbehave at w equal to 0. So, uh, all the coefficients of the negative powers of the variable have to vanish which means that f is essentially a polynomial. So, it is pretty easy to see that this is uh, true. So, let me write that down uh, for the uh, uh, the Laurent uh, <coughs> expansion at infinity has uh, only uh, uh, a polynomial as uh, uh, as a singular part as as the singular part and uh, uh, the the analytic part at infinity cannot uh, be uh, non constant since uh, terms involving uh, 1 by w uh, uh, will render f uh, uh, singular at 0 ok. 
so that is the so that is the proof ok. So you so let me again repeat it you write f <coughs> f of w you write it as positive negative powers of w including a constant then the positive powers of w that can be only finitely many because uh, that is what will happen if f has a pole at infinity. So the positive powers of w they will they will be polynomial ok and the constant and the negative powers of w that that will be the analytic part at infinity ok. But then this uh, this expansion should be also valid at 0. <coughs> so at 0 negative powers of w cannot be allowed ok. So there are no negative powers of z as a result you see that uh, the analytic part of uh, f is just a constant ok. So the analytic part is a constant the singular part is a polynomial when you add it together you get a polynomial so f has to be a polynomial. So the only functions, entire functions, non-constant entire functions, which are analytic, which 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 have a pole at infinity, are <coughs> are polynomials. Okay. And of course, <coughs> if you uh, if you relax the condition that f is entire, but you add the condition that f is meromorphic, okay, uh, which means that it has only uh, isolated singularities which are poles in the plane, then you can prove that f has to be a rational function, okay. It has to be a quotient of polynomials. Uh, with the uh, with the uh, degree of the uh, numerator polynomial greater than the degree of the denominator polynomial ok. So this is something that uh, uh, you can show but we will come to it because you know eventually we have to come to meromorphic functions that is what I want to do uh, and you know uh, just to connect things back uh, in, in our discussion you know we are trying to prove uh, uh, the big Picard theorem and the big Picard theorem involves uh, looking at uh, functions uh, which have essential singularities at infinity ok and or probably functions as which have poles at infinity and basically you want to study meromorphic functions and families of meromorphic functions you want to do topology on uh, and, and in fact study compact families of meromorphic functions compact spaces of meromorphic functions. So uh, <coughs> but in all these things you want to be able to work with infinity very easily the po you want to work with the point at infinity uh, uh, in a very easy way and that is the reason why we are analyzing the point at infinity in so much detail ok fine. So um, now that we have we have this uh, uh, so, so let me write that as well uh, so here is another remark. Um, 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 suppose uh, f of w uh, is uh, 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 a function which is uh, meromorphic on the complex plane uh, uh, which means that it has only uh, poles as isolated singularities in C and uh, no non isolated singularities ok. So this is what a meromorphic function is uh, it has only uh, the only singularities it has they are all isolated. So it has no non-isolated singularity and every isolated singularity is a pole ok this is what a meromorphic function is and then you also assume that infinity is an isolated singular point and assume that infinity is a pole ok then the then you then the claim is that f is a quotient of polynomials with the numerator polynomial having degree greater than the denominator polynomial ok. Uh, so uh, so let me write this uh, then uh, f has uh, pole at infinity if and only if uh, f of w is equal to p of w by q of w where p q are polynomials with uh, degree p greater than degree q ok and uh, and f has a removable singularity at 
at infinity if and only if f of w is of the same form p of w by q of w but now the <coughs> degree of p is less than or equal to degree of q. with pq polynomials and degree of p is less than or equal to degree of q okay. So, <coughs> uh, so basically this remark tells you uh, the obvious thing namely you know uh, if, I, if, if you take two polynomials okay and uh, you take their ratio you take p of w and q of w they are two polynomials and you take p of w by q of w you know that p by q will be uh, an analytic function at all points where q is not 0 okay and the points where q is 0 uh, they will be poles okay and uh, so p by q will be a meromorphic function okay and uh, this meromorphic function will behave well at infinity if the degree of p is less than or equal to degree of q okay and uh, that is because if the degree of the numerator is less than or equal to degree of the denominator as the variable goes to infinity you will get a limit okay whereas if the degree of p is greater than the degree of q this quotient will go to infinity as you go to infinity. So, infinity will become a pole okay and uh, that is exactly what this remark says okay. Um, so, you can you can try this uh, it is pretty easy to do um, but we will come back to it later right. Uh, now, what I want to uh, shift my attention is to uh, uh, do something connected with uh, uh, residues okay. So, you know uh, uh, one of the ways of trying to study a function at a singular point is uh, by the so called residue or the function at that point and why is the residue important? The residue is important because the residue actually gives you the integral of the function uh, along a simple closed curve that goes once around that point. So, the, the whole importance of the residue is because it will allow you to integrate the function around a singularity that is why residues are important and <clears throat> that is why you use residues to compute so many integrals in a first course in complex analysis you even compute many real integrals by converting them uh, as real parts or, uh, or directly into complex integrals and then trying to apply the residue theorem or the Cauchy theorem okay. So, the moral of the story is that residues are important just because you can integrate a function around a singularity. Okay. And, uh, uh, and you know uh, so now uh, if you think of the point at infinity as a singularity then it is natural that you will you will ask uh, about the residue of the function at infinity okay. So, you can talk about the residue of the function at the point at infinity and uh, what do you get. So, the so the answer to that is uh, something very nice actually it tells you <coughs> in a way. Uh, uh, why Cauchy's theorem fails for the point at infinity. Uh, the, the beautiful thing is that uh, since Cauchy theorem has failed for the point at infinity you think you have lost something but the point is you are getting it back in a different way. There is a so called uh, extended version of the residue theorem it is called the residue theorem for the extended complex plane which tells you uh, that uh, you should expect the Cauchy theorem to fail at infinity okay. So, uh, if I tell you in a nutshell uh, if I want to tell you in a nutshell what the residue theorem for the extended complex plane is it is very very simple it says take a function uh, on the extended complex plane which has only isolated singularities okay. Uh, then uh, mind you if it has only isolated singularities there are only finitely many okay because you are looking at an isolated subset of a compact set. The the extended complex plane is a compact set mind you the extended complex plane is a one point compactification of the complex plane it is a compact set home it is homeomorphic to the Riemann sphere okay which is compact okay and if you take a if you give if you take a, an isolated subset of a compact set you should get only finitely many points okay. So, the moral of the story is that uh, uh, if when I am looking at a function on the extended complex plane which has only isolated singularities there are only finitely many singularities okay and then uh, one of the singularities could be the point at infinity. So, that function may have infinity as a singular point or it may not have infinity as a singular point. But the beautiful thing is 
the residue theorem says now if you integrate over along, along any simple closed curve okay and assume that the simple closed curve goes around all the finite singularities okay all the singularities in the finite complex plane okay the residue theorem says the sum of all the residues okay uh, inside the curve plus the residue at infinity will add up to 0. The total sum of residues is 0 that is the residue theorem for the which includes the point at infinity. The residue at infinity has to neutralize the sum of the residues at the finitely many points. See that is the reason you see when I try to integrate 1 by w over a sufficiently large circle okay I get if I put positive orientation for this uh, if I put negative orientation for the circle so that it the infinity lies in the interior of that circle okay which actually becomes exterior because of negative orientation then what happens is that I do not get 0 okay even though 1 by w is analytic at infinity I get minus 1 and what is that minus 1 that minus 1 is to it, it is to neutralize the plus 1 which is the residue at 0 of 1 by w and you see sum of residues of 1 by w at 0 which is plus 1 and the residue at infinity which is minus 1 they add up to give 0 and this is exactly uh, a demonstration of the uh, residue theorem for the external complex plane. So the, so the fact is that the if you take a function which is analytic at infinity the, the integral at infinity uh, does not vanish because it actually tries to uh, you know uh, it neutralize the sum of residues at finite uh, at the finite points uh, at the points in the complex plane which are uh, singular points okay that is the reason why the uh, integral uh, at infinity is not giving you 0 that is the reason why Cauchy's theorem fails. So Cauchy's theorem fails but it is not in vain you get the residue theorem for the extended plane okay. So I will elaborate on this uh, next uh, class okay.